Hello, everybody, and welcome to Talking Hearthstone, the podcast where, well, we talk about Hearthstone. I'm Tito Santana, and this is episode eight. I have been invited into the Blizzard Theory Crafting, crafting event, which will happen tomorrow as I'm recording this, um, July 17th. I will be the second half of the afternoon, so it, it is basically 6 p.m. to midnight Eastern Standard Time. Um, very excited, very unexpected. It's kind of um, thrown my week into a bit of chaos, which, welcome chaos. And we're going to be giving away some bundles. We get some mega bundles to give away. So if you hear this and you are looking to, you know, see some theory crafting and win some bundles, I have a secret for you. I'm not a big streamer, so there'll be less people there, which will mean more opportunity for you to win a bundle. Do with that as you will. Um, I'm not going to have any gameplay today. It's been a really crazy week, and I really just wanted to make sure I stuck to getting something out on Tuesday. And I'm also going to not have any um, YouTube for this. Well, we're, we're going to have it on YouTube, but it's not going to be video. Uh, like I said, it's just been a little busy. I figured let's just make sure we get something out. Let's talk about the theory crafting and, and go from there. So what I want to do today is I just want to kind of go through some of the classes um, I know we haven't, we didn't go through every class. I'm learning how to do this solo thing. So next time we'll better, next expansion, we will better plan out how we're going to go through each and every class. But for now, um, I'm going to just kind of do a highlight of each class and I want to kind of cover some basic archetypes that already exists, some new archetypes that they might be bringing along, and then also kind of look into the tourist concept for each class and, this is not going to be a real theory crafting episode. We're saving that for tomorrow. And this is not going to be, I don't have decks made yet. I have a couple, but they're mostly Paladin. Um, so I, I just want to kind of get some ideas th flowing and talk about them out loud and maybe get them flowing for you. Uh, you we're not going to have anything concrete coming out of this, but let, let's just talk about these things in theory. So let's go ahead and start off with Warrior. For Warrior, our existing... Um, Archetypes are Highlander and Control, for the most part. I mean, there's some other things. There's mining, but th those kind of fall into these as well. Um, and we have some... The new Warrior, we have some cards that are kind of hand buffy. We have some cards that are Menagerie. And then we have Rye Cleaver and Ham the Hungry and whatnot. So this, this set is kind of... Maybe not all over the place, but it's definitely strange. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I think that, unfortunately, they're going to get some more control tools. I think we're still going to see um, Boom Boss, Bran, Reno, uh, with maybe a little bit extra there. Uh, but I like some of the cards in this set. I like uh, Dra uh, Draconic Delicacy, which is an 8-mana 6-6. Six, six. Rush Elusive can only take one damage at a time. This goes really well with the card that deals five damage to your minion after you summon it. Uh, you can get that down a lot faster. I believe it's chemical spell, something along those lines. Um, there's some un interesting, you get char, which is deal seven damage to a minion. Give a minion in your hand stats equal to the excess damage. That's a four mana spell. So that's interesting. Uh, line cook, which is a tradable taunt. When you draw this, get a copy of it. Um, so th there's a lot of different options here. Uh, I think we're going to see a taunt warrior maybe emerge, especially when you start looking at the... Uh, Druid cards. Now, keep in mind that Druid, uh, excuse me, Warrior likes to play Ziliax, Kiliax, whatever you want to call them. And then you play uh, Professor Boom there, bring back two of them, maybe four of them if you've played Brand. Well, you now have access to Hydration Station, which is resurrect your three highest taunt minions. So that is kind of nasty. It is going to be a very good control too. You've now given Warrior access to ramp with spells like New Horizons, three mana, increase your mana maximum mana by three and gain an extra mana crystal. Uh, it's not going to matter so much if Brand costs eight if you're playing him on four. So there's some interesting things here. I, I I'm, I'm not sure if the menagerie type stuff that we have here like we have draw uh three types of different minion types um destroy an enemy minion with attack less than this equal to this from the um uh undercooked calamari um i i think there's a lot of interesting things here 
I don't know if we're going to see end up seeing a new archetype or if we're just going to end up seeing uh, the Highlander and Control ones uh, reinforced. So our next class, let's go ahead and talk about uh, Warlock, Warlock, Taurus into Death Knight. Now, Warlock, my initial look at Warlock is, hey, they just got more pain tools because a lot of they have a lot of self damage here. But it's like different pain is more like a mid range type pain lock. Um like you're not necessarily looking to roll the game and get giants down. Well, not that you wouldn't still do that, but uh, this has the things like uh, Party Plan of Vona, which is battle cry. If you have taken H damage on your turn, summon Oribus. And Oribus is the uh, minion, is I believe is an 8 8 taunt that when it dies, um, it then gives a minion in your hand, summon Oribus. So th there's some interesting things there. Um, Health drink is nice. It's a, a three mana lifesteal deal three damage to a minion. You get three of those for the price of one. Announced darkness. I, I don't see um, seeing play outside of some super memes, meme stuff. But the um, Warlock Taurus into Death Knight. And Death Knight has a lot of death rattle synergy as well. And it's very tokeny. Uh, you got um, like summon five one one ghouls that attack random enemies. You got Eliza Goreblade, which is the legendary there, which uh, for Death Rattle for the rest of the game, your minions have plus one attack. And you also have Corpsicle, which is a two mana spell that deals three damage. Spend three corpses to return this to your hand at the end of your turn. Uh, you can pair some of that with uh, Horizon's Edge, which is the four mana five durability location. Deal three damage randomly split amongst all enemies. After a friendly minion dies, reopen this. So there's a lot of attention for, for some tokeny kind of burst strategies here. Uh, there is no... I don't think there's going to be anything more than uh, different versions of Rainbow. You have one card that is double rune, and that's Slippery Slope. And I think the, the name of that is appropriate, but it's a two-mana spell. Freeze a character, draw a card for each frozen character. And I think that they're kind of moving away from the double and triple runes for the most part. Uh, I think that it may be too restrictive or maybe too hard to balance or, or whatnot, but um, I don't know if we'll ever see triple rune cards again. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm kind of okay with it, but I also kind of sad about that. Uh, but I think that we're going to see some interesting Warlocks cards here. Now that I go over this, so Warlock had the most uh, existing archetypes i think out of all of everything it had sludge now when i say this i'm not saying these were all playable tier one tier two tier three decks i'm saying these are things that people were playing at some point or another sludge pain insanity uh you had even handlock or handlock which is not going to be valid for theory crafting tomorrow or for the next set because i can and baku go bye bye um, and you also have mining now we're seeing kind of like more pain but i think more like a mid-rangey pain and and you have death rattle synergy and like I said, Death Knight has uh, Freeze, it has Death Rattles, and it has the Corpse School thing. So um, I think there's going to be a little bit of option opportunity for Warlock to have some burst kind of tokeny, kind of aggro-y type thing, almost zoo-ish, but not quite. So we'll see how that goes. Um, next class we have is Shaman, and Shaman Taurus into Demon Hunter. And that this is a pretty interesting... Um, development because shaman was by far i think outside of nature shaman which had really um no good place in the meta because it was just it didn't matter what you did they just had to get to turn six and they could kill you probably um this set has a bunch of interesting things i don't know how it's going to work out uh you have a three mana three eight taunt this this is permanently frozen and melt melemental melt a mental it's it's an interesting card. It's it's an it's a nice little wall. It's almost like um how walls work in Magic the Gathering. But you know, it, it's it's strong. Uh you if you can summon it back, great. Uh you have natural talents, which is get a random naga and a random spell, they cost one less. Uh the spell the the, the minion that's going to be kind of interesting is Razzle Dazzler. Um I don't think this is gonna be very good, but I could be wrong. This is a seven mana four four. Battle cry, summon a random five cost minion, repeat for each spell school you have cast this game. So I, there, there's some there's some powerful things here, but again, I don't know if there's enough here to really create its own archetype or really maybe save 
uh, shaman. But uh, again, you had no idea what people are going to come up with. Uh, uh, Cabaret headliner is pretty good. Battle cry reduce the cost of a spell of each school in your hand by two. That goes kind of well in the uh, death uh, death knight, which is going to Taurus into shaman, and that's interesting because you have some your the tur- the death knight um, character is buttons uh, five and a five five shaman Taurus battle cry draw a spell of each spell school. So, I mean, you have the options to possibly get some really cheap spells going there in Death Knight. So, it's really kind of interesting how when you have these tourist mechanics and these tourist um, decks, how you may not even be playing an archetype or or enhancing an archetype that you might be playing if you weren't playing the um, class, if you're just playing the class solo, because it's it's going to give you different options and different um, approaches to how to do it. I also wonder if there's ever going to be any decks that play the tourist just for the tourist effect and not to actually get cards from the other set. Um, but um, the existing Shaman archetypes, you had Highlander, which was good for a while, but then kind of faded. Uh, Evolve-ish, you have you know some ability for that. You also have the other Evolve, which is the Swarm Nostalgia. That can go pretty well with the uh, uh, Demon Hunter set, which is... Um, generating a lot of tokens and so you could possibly get some charge minions swing face and then nostalgia them or something or i believe we still have the location that buffs things or that um evolves things and of course there was nature shaman which hopefully never comes back now in the new shaman you have the naga you have the rainbow and demon hunter is really kind of chargey aggro so i think there's a lot of potential there it's going to be fun um let's go ahead and talk about rogue rogue um has existing archetypes of like mining Weapon. It's always kind of a miracle thing about Rogue, depending on what's going on. So, yeah, you have options there. Um, the new Rogue is kind of a continuation of the random Rogue stuff. Uh, kind of like what the mining's doing right now with the uh, Scorpion and generating more random things. And there's also a lot of pirates. But the pirates also tend to play in the random stuff. So I think there could be a bunch of different ways to approach that style but i think they can work out differently depending on the cards you pick and um rogue taurus into warlock which like we said has more pain synergy and death rattles i really don't see what we're going to be doing with uh the warlock cards in rogue especially since uh and again like i said it's way early um there are there are some amazing deck builders out there people are going to figure things out like maybe rogue likes health drink uh maybe rogue likes eat the imp um, but just, uh, curse Sylvanir might not be bad. Give a million plus three, plus three. And at the start of your turn, deal three damage to your hero. I mean, that might be okay, but, um, overall, I'm not really feeling the tourist into, um, or out, out from rogue into uh warlock, but rogue cards, like I said, they have a lot of interesting cards. You have a uh, treasure hunter, Eudora, which is, uh, go on a side quest. It's battle cry. You get a side quest. And you play three cards from other classes to complete the side quest. And that side quest will give you a Kazakazan treasure. Um, you get to discover one of those. So um, those are always pretty good. I mean, you can low roll, but even low rolling, those cards are good. Oh, well, manager is a pretty good card. Uh, two mana, deal two damage, combo, get a coin. You also have metal detector, which is not a good card. It's a three mana, two, two after your hero attacks and kills a minion, get a coin. That's very situational but generating coins are nice maybe we're going to see some wishing well rogues and whatnot coming up soon um the taurus is maestra uh mass merchant which is the warlock taurus battle cry discover a hero from the past this is six mana six five so there's potential for a lot of fun there i think discovering heroes i think almost any hero could be potentially good but um and the fact that you discover it gives you a little bit more flexibility Yes, you might low roll, of course, but I think there's a lot of good potential there. Um, you also have um, Swarthy's, uh, Swarthy's Sword, Sword Shiner, which is Battle Cry, set the attack and durability of your weapon to three. I actually think that this might be interesting in Paladin because Paladin, Taurus, and the Rogue, and um, I understand you have this, you have the Pain is Virtue, but when Pain is Virtue is down to um, two one, if you can maybe get a couple extra swings out of it with a little more damage that might not be so bad um i also like snatch and grab which is destroy two random enemy minions cost one less for each card you've played from another class 
removal is always good, and that's going to cost you in Rogue often um, probably free or close to free. And the location, Knickknack Shack, uh, draw a card if you play this on your turn, reopen this. Uh, I think that's just going to potentially enable some nice uh, miracle pop-off turns, depending on what you're doing. So I don't feel like Rogue got different. It's still going to be ran generating random stuff for the most part, but I think the tools they have are interesting, and I think it's, it'll be a lot of fun to play. And people always, as long as Rogue can do Rogue things, people are going to play Rogue. So um, I don't I don't necessarily know. I don't think it matters how good or not it's going to be. People are going to like it. All right, so let's look at Priest, Taurusing, into Hunter. Now, Priest is a really weird set for Priest because it is... Uh, we've had Shadow in the past, and this isn't really quite Shadow. Um, there's a couple... Sh I mean, the spells are Shadow, but everything is sort of um, self-damaging, uh, pain lock, kind of, but for Priest. So that's the main thing, is you have... Like, Acupuncture is a one-mana uh, four... Uh, one-mana deal four damage to both heroes. That's a very aggro card. Uh, you have Nightshade T, which is deal three damage to a minion, deal two damage to your hero. So, and, and that's the drink, so you get three of those. Sensory Deprivation, which is summon a copy of an um, enemy minion. If you have 20 or less health, destroy the original. So this is basically mind control. Um, so there's, there's a lot of good options there. Chill and Vulgin is a three mana, three, three hunter tourist. Battle cry, choose two minions, swap their stats. Also, like a, a mini mind control, you know, you play a one mana minion, you swap the stats with it, and now you have the big minion. It's also potentially interesting if you get some big, uh, big um, beast and hunter, and then you can um, swap the the cost of or the health and mana to a smaller beast, and then attack with that. So, uh, I think Chill and Vulgin has a lot of versatility. I like the effect better when you get it off uh, Mimron, but. Um, I think overall he's still going to be okay. Um, rest in peace. Summon each player. Each player summons their highest cost minion that died this game. Um, depending on what you're playing, that could be really good. If you cap out at something like maybe a beached whale, that could be very um, painful for aggro to, to try to get through a 420 taunt. Uh, we also have uh, the mechanic in Priest that is... Um, Narian Sooth Fancy, which a uh, battle cry is four mana four four battle cry. Get two fortunes that are copies of the top card of your deck. So this basically works like the Mirage effect in um, Highlander Paladin, where you kind of get a, you see the card in the Mirage, and when you play it, um, it is that card. Now that's going to give you a lot of options to see what's what card you have on top of your deck. And that's going to go very nicely with your 6-mana, 5-6, Twilight Medium, Taunt, Battle Cry, set the cost of the top card of your deck to 1. So if you have something expensive, excuse me, that you want to play, you can um, play this and then play the Sooth Fancy because... I'm sorry, you can play the Medium and then play one of your fortunes that you generated with the Sooth Fancy because if the top card of your deck costs 1 then the card in your hand that is representing that card will also cost one. So I, I think there's going to be a lot of interesting things there. I don't think it's what Priest players are looking for. In fact, I think a lot of Priest players that are looking for more of the traditional type Priest cards are going to be a little sad, but I think for the, the Megases of the world, they're really going to enjoy this. Yeah, you are also um, Taurusing into Hunter, which is painful for P Priest players. Uh, you have the options of a lot of Battle Cry synergies, with uh, Hunter. Um, Trusty Fishing Rod will be good to get your Clerics. And those are some of your most powerful cards. Uh, repeat the last spell you cast at an enemy. Could be really good with like a Sensory Deprivation. Uh, Sasquatch Battle Cry Repeat. The, each card you played last turn can be very, very, very strong. So I think there's a lot of synergy there. Um, what those decks look like, it will be very interesting to see. Um, you also have a card called Brain Masseuse, which is a one mana two four. Whenever this minion takes damage, also deal that damage amount to your hero. One mana two four is really nice and strong. Um, usually they come with a downside, but um, it is good for, especially if you're playing in something like a control matchup, it's good for just kind of um, helping you clear and, and stay in control. So I, I think Priest got a lot of good cards. They just didn't get a lot of traditionally good cards. Now Priest had... Um, Old Priest had Highlander, Zarimi, Overheal. Now we're looking at Pain and Fortune. And yes, I think we're going to be able to um, uh, make some um, 
I think we're, I wonder if there's going to be a pain over heel type kind of thing with some push and pull. Um, I don't know. We'll see. So let's move on to Paladin. Paladin's existing uh, archetypes are Flood, Hand Buff, Mining, Highlander. A lot of crossover there between the high Hand Buff and the Mining and the Flood in some cases. Um, overall, my favorite uh, has been Hand Buff. I've been playing that a lot. I think we get a lot of support for that, especially if you just look at um, the uh, Legendary, which is Sandcastle. It's S-A-N-C apostrophe A-Z-E-L, which is a 5-mana 3-8 rush uh, after this attacks turn into location and loc location is give a minion plus three attack uh, transform back in the sandcastle and we talked about this last week is that 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 ability is based on sandcastle's attack so you buff this in your hand then you can rush clear something uh, buff up one of your minions on board or say maybe a south sea deckhand Turn back into a minion, clear something else if you have to, and then just go face. Um, South Sea Deckhand goes really nicely with the, there's a new two mana, uh, excuse me, a new, yeah, three mana, two, four pirate battle cry, give a friendly pirate wind fury. So we basically have Shrooms give eight back that they had nerfed at the beginning of last expansion. So we're looking forward to that. Um, there's also a lot of synergy with the Taurus, which is Lanessa. And she is a 5-mana 2-6 rogue Taurus. Your spells that cost 2 or less cast twice. Uh, those go really well, like we talked about I think, last week with the sunscreens that you can generate off of uh, Life Saving Aura and um, the Volleymall, which um, are spells that are 1-mana, give a minion plus 1, plus 2. And so casting those twice are good. They will discount your Sea Shanty, which is a 10-mana spell, summon 3 five, 5 Pirates. Uh, cost one less for each character this game and do not forget that lanessa is a card that is in core so uh you'll be able to get a lot more of those sunscreens in back and um, i think this is going to be a fun fun uh set for paladin i am very excited um we have mage mage taurus in the paladin so some of these uh um I, some of these sun sunblock mechanic could be interesting um but also don't forget that you have sea shanty which would work a little differently in Mage because while, yes, you can reduce it by casting at um, spells at characters, uh, Mage is possibly looking to play some big spell in this expansion. Like you have King Tide as their legendary battle cry. Both players' spells cost five until the end of next turn. That's a nice disruption tool, especially against maybe something like a Rogue, but also lets you get down something like Sea Shanty or a Tsunami, which is an eight-mana spell, summon three... Uh, three six water elementals that freeze the attack random enemies. Um, I I think that we're going to see some really good um, options in mage. I think it's going to be a little bit more diverse. Tide pools discover is a three mana location with three durability. Discover a spell that costs three or less after you cast the spell. Repeat this. Um, and uh, the, right, I'm not sure about the Taurus Ray Layla Sand Sculptor Paladin Taurus. After you cast the spell, summon. A random two cost minion and give it divine shield. I mean, that goes well with, say, the paladin drink, which is a, a divine brew. Give a character divine shield if it already has had one, give it plus one attack this turn. So, and there's a lot of potential synergies there as well. Uh, existing mage archetypes, as you had um, rainbow spell, small spell, uh, you had big mage, even though that really never kind of made it. And you had mining, uh, secret. Um, now we have big spells and we have more spells tools just in general. Um, so I think there's a lot of power and potential there. I think mage is going to be one of the more diverse classes going, uh, forward. Uh, let's talk about hunter. Hunter is a weird set. Um, I think it's going to be okay. I think it's going to be fun. There's a lot of battle cry synergy, like we mentioned. Um, you got a lot of parrots, a lot of birds, um, catch of the day is interesting. One mana, three, three battle cry, rush battle cry, summon a two, one, worm for your opponent so you could potentially just clear the 2-1 worm and now you have yourself a uh, a 3-2 for one mana um, or you can clear that with something else or ignore it um, trusty fishing rod will get you the catch of the day which is kind of um, some interesting flavor uh, ranger gilly is interesting as the warrior tourist at the end of your turn get a 2-3 crocolis death rattle give all your mains in your hand plus 2 plus 3 um, the crocolis sounds weird, but like if you're buffing your whole hand, now you you get like a, um, a two mana uh, four six, which is not bad. 
And you can pair it with um, cards in uh, Warrior, like Cup of Muscle, which is give them in your hand plus two, plus one. And that's a drink spell. That's a one mana drink spell. You have three of those. So you, you have some buffing potential there. Um, if you buff up, say, like a King Plush, then you have a little bit more clearing ability there. So I think Hunter will be a lot of fun. Death Roll is an uh, interesting spell of five mana. Destroy an enemy minion. Deal damage equal to its attack randomly split amongst all enemies. So that, that seems like it could be fun. You can destroy uh, like their big minions and hopefully clear their board or, or do something off of that. Um, so I think Hunter is an interesting place. Hunter um, had Token Hunter, which was the big one. We also had Egg, Breakfast Hunter, whatever you want to call it, which was a lot of fun. And Secrets. Um, New Hunter now has all that battle cry, buffish kind of stuff. So I think it's really going to be a lot of fun. All right, we got three classes left to get through here. Uh, Druid is going to turn us into Mage. Now, existing Druids you had is what they were calling Combo Druid, which is just kind of Ramp Druid with, you know, Marin and um, Dorian and whatnot. You had Treant Druid, which was decent for a lot of it. You had Drum Druid, which, you know, Treant Druid, but a little different. Highlander Druid, Dragon Druid, which is one of the better ones. You had Boomkin Druid, which never really took off. I think there's a lot of potential for Druid here, which is sad. There's a lot of ramp power here, especially with um, the New Horizons like we talked about. And then Mista Vista, which is their Taurus, 5 mana, 5-5 five, five, Mage Taurus, Battlecry, and 3 turns replay every single spell you've cast between now and then. So you can set that up to do some really powerful things. Uh, again, you have to resurrect your highest cost taunt minions, which I don't think really goes um, all that well with the mage cards, but uh, you have a Zilliax in hand or whatnot, and you have maybe Killiax, which dies twice. You have potential there. Um, they're, they're legendary. Their non torus legendary is a 7 mana, 4 5 cruise captain Laura, battle cry, summon two random locations. This one is very i think not good because usually the locations you have you want to synergize with something you're doing in your deck now maybe you're doing this to try to play the uh giants that you get from the locations there's a new giant in the neutral set and that is um let me find it here that is a 10 mana seaside giant um, cost two less for each time you've used a location this game. So maybe there's some potential there, but um, I think Druid is going to be just fine ramping. We're going to still see a lot of the same cards we did, but we're going to see a lot of um, interesting uh, quick ramping. And I think that some of these cards are going to get nerfed relatively early in the expansion. Also, Trail Mix is a, is a spell that exists. That is a two mana spell. Gain two mana crystals next turn only. So that's kind of a way to get yourself to play some of your more expensive things early and set things up for the future. I think that's going to be a really good card. Um, now you have Sleep Under the Stars, which is kind of like, um, what was it? The 10 mana spell that um, would do 10 damage, give you 5 armor. Uh, I would do 5 damage, gain 5 armor, summon a 5-5. Five, five. Um, Ultimate Infestation, I believe it was called. Um, this is kind of a mini version of that. It's um, but with ramp, it's a seven mana sleep under the stars. Choose th choose thrice, draw two cards, gain five armor, refresh three mana crystals. So um, I think you get to pick which ones you want. That's going to be interesting, especially when you can increase your maximum uh, mana and whatnot. So. We'll see how this goes. Um, I'm not particularly excited to be playing against Druid. I know very people are very excited for the Druid set. You know, Demon Hunter um, has existing archetypes of Shopper, Highlander. You have kind of an aggro, low to the ground one. Uh, Shopper was mostly what you saw. Uh, the new Demon Hunter is kind of like a charge aggro. And you can get into Freeze with some of the pain capabilities there. So you can really kind of get some probably aggressive aggressive demon hunter um you have really some interesting cards um that i'm not sure how they're going to fit into things but i still think they're going to be powerful um ariana thrill seeker is your tourist damage uh damage your hero takes on your turn is redirected to a random enemy that's going to go really well with the priest stuff uh cliff dive is a uh six mana summon two minions from your deck give them rush 
then they go back into your deck. That seems fairly powerful, uh, especially if you're using the clear or you have some some big things that might go really well with um, the all terrain Voidhound, which is a seven mana five eight. When this attacks, give your hero plus five attack this turn. So there's potential there to do a lot of silly things. Uh, Dangerous Cliffside is your location. You get a four mana, three durability location. Summon two one one pirates with charge. After your hero attacks, reopen this. So that's basically like guaranteed damage on the board. And then you got Patches of the Pilot, which is a one mana one one battle cry. Shuffle six patches. Excuse me, six parachutes into your deck that summon a one one pilot pirate when charge. Let's try that again. Battle cry. Shuffle six. Uh, parachutes into your deck that summon a 1-1 one, one pirate with charge when drawn. So it's kind of a take on um, how pirate uh, patches used to work, but it's different. And this game, this could be good, good early if you play it on one and you get those early. I don't know how well it'll scale into the late game, but we will see. All right, and then finally that brings us to Death Knight. And Death Knight goes into Shaman as a Taurus. And like we said, Death Knight has a lot of the Death Rattle um, synergies and some freeze uh, mechanics. You have uh, like Frostbitten, Freebooter is uh, three mana, two two, Death Rattle, freeze three random enemies. Any that were already frozen take five damage instead. That feels like that could be pretty strong. Um, and you also have some ability for like uh, Brittle Bone Buccaneer, which is a two mana, one four undead pirate. Both of those were undead pirates, by the way. Whenever you play a Death Rattle minion, give it reborn. Seems really good because then you'll get the double. Um, that might go very well with Eliza Goreblade. Um, you also have a Dark um, Dreadhound Handler, which is a 2 mana 2 2. Rush Death Rattle, summon a 1 1 uh, Dreadhound with Reborn. That's a lot of damage packed into a 2 2 minion. Um, so I think we're going to see Demon, uh, Death Knight uh, be pretty good. I think we're going to see a lot of this in Rainbow because we are generating corpses and spending corpses and. Yeah, I think that's going to be really good for Rainbow. So, I, I again, I know I didn't go through. Uh, we went through very quickly, and um, we're kind of over time here. So um, I hope this was all right and interesting, and I will probably try to figure out a better way to do expansion time, next expansion, uh, start a little earlier and be a little more organized. Um, again, I was going to try to do something more with this today, but the whole having a three craft tomorrow is kind of taking over for things. So remember, tomorrow... Uh, if or you'll probably hear in this today, um, Tito Santana HS on Twitter, Twitch, specifically Twitter, excuse me, specifically Twitch tomorrow night uh, between um, 6 and 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I will be doing um, the theory crafting. I might not be there right at six. Uh, depends on how things are going. We have some uh, family things that happen around those times and it's hard to necessarily shift priorities but i will be there for most of the night uh, i will be joined by doc mcbutt my co-host from bread and butter we'll be doing some theory crafting um but anyway guys uh, i hope to see you there it's been a great week it's, i'm looking forward to the new set um i'll have a short episode on tuesday of next week i probably won't have any gameplay either but i'll try to get some more uh because that, that's patch day right that's release day so I will try to get more um, an episode or two out next week and talking about the new things and getting everybody excited and maybe finding some new things for you all to play. But anyway, guys and gals, I think I'm done talking. You have a, you have a great day and we'll see you soon.